This is the Sony a7 IV, and this is the Fujifilm X-H2. So the Sony a7 IV has been around for almost a year now, and it's priced at $2,500, whereas the Fujifilm X-H2 is priced at close to $2,000. So in today's video, we're going to be comparing the Sony a7 IV versus the Fujifilm X-H2, because instead of enjoying your camera and taking photos with it, you would rather watch some random Asian guy on the internet share his thoughts and opinion that could possibly take away that joy for you by pitting both cameras against each other. Both cameras are great by the way, but they're not perfect. Uh, no camera is, so it's best to enjoy the cameras for what they can do and not for what they can't do. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's me, I am Tung, and in today's video, we got the Fujifilm X-H2 versus the Sony a7 IV comparison video. And yeah, again, like I said, I, I really don't like doing these comparison videos as much. They're fun for you guys, I guess. You guys get to see how crappy your camera is when it's compared uh, next to each other. So that's always fun. <laughs> it's all good. I'm just joking, guys, guys, guys. Just know that I'm joking all the time, okay? I'm not being serious. Nothing in life should be as serious, especially not cameras. You guys don't have to agree, but that doesn't mean that you can get disrespectful in the comment section, okay? If you guys disrespect me, I'm gonna shame you guys. I'm gonna pin that comment, and then I'm gonna shame you guys, and then I'll let everybody else see that comment and see what a big idiot you are, so please, Keep it respectful, okay guys? It's just cameras, it's not that deep. Let's just start with the image quality. Okay, so both take great images. If you need a proper photo camera, I think both are great choices. You can choose the full frame sensor and get that full frame look with the Sony a7 IV, or you can get the Fujifilm X-H2 with its 40 megapixel APS-C sensor that can also shoot 8K video. Speaking of 8K, the Fujifilm X-H2 can film up to 8K 30p. Now, I would say that 8K is still overkill. The average person slash family does not have an 8K TV nor an 8K monitor to view uh, the 8K footage that you guys would capture. In that regard, I guess it's like pretty pointless <laughs> to even um, have 8K as a feature. The only thing I can see this being good for is for the cropping and the reframing power of it. But let's just say you forgot your long uh, your long lens, right? For some reason, you just forgot your telephone lens. You can use your wide lens, film in 8K, and punch in without having your footage break down. Some can see this as a benefit and can be another tool to use in your tool bag. I'd say if you keep relying on 8K to reframe, you're lousy at composing your shot and you should learn to improve on your compositional skill. The Fujifilm X-H2 has other filming options as well, like 6.2K uh, up to 30p, 4K HQ, and regular 4K. And it can film up to 4K 60 with a slight crop. The Sony a7 IV can film up to 4K 60 with an APS-C crop, so just be mindful of that when you're using that mode. Both video footage looks great. If you're into doing some light video work, if you're doing stuff that is locked on to a tripod and a gimbal, I say both are up, uh, up for the task. For low light stuff, I would say both uh, do very well in low light, in my opinion. I would say the Sony a7 IV does produce a cleaner looking image in low light scenario versus the Fujifilm X-H2. Even though the X-H2 has a 40 megapixel sensor, I would say that the X-H2 does an adequate job in low light. I would recommend you guys watch the hybrid shooter uh, Sony a7 IV versus the Fujifilm X-H2 video where he does a low light high ISO comparison between the two and he can explain it much better than I can. Anyways, let's move on to the autofocusing. The autofocusing works great on both. Both are quick and snappy when using single point autofocusing. You can pick either or and be satisfied with the autofocusing system. They both work great by 2022 standards. Saying that, I still give the Sony a7 IV the slight edge in uh, the autofocusing tracking. Every time I shot burst while tracking, I'm getting 90 to 95% of my shots in focus. That is something to marvel at when it comes to Sony's autofocusing tracking technology. They got some special voodoo in their cameras, man. So good job, Sony. <laughs> 
The X-H2 isn't far behind. So many people are hating on Fuji's autofocusing and I get it. Uh, you Fuji fanboys hate Sony, but secretly you just want Fujifilm to be like Sony, at least for the autofocusing anyways. Like we all want that Sony, Sony tech inside our Fujifilm for sure. Even I do, don't worry about it. Also, it's 2022 or 2023, depending on when I release this video. So happy new year. If you can't get good shots with these two cameras, I don't think it's the camera's fault. I'm sorry, mate. Video autofocusing, I would say, is better on the Sony a7 IV. There is this one feature that I really like called the touch to track, where you touch an object on the your LCD screen, and once you do, the Sony will draw a box over that object, signaling that it has locked focus on that. So whenever you're doing B-roll and you're moving around, you don't have to worry about uh, rack focusing or anything like that. You can trust the Sony to handle it flawlessly. So this is great to use when I'm filming these gear reviews. I don't have to worry about the autofocusing. I can just focus on my compositions and my movements. The Fuji has no such um, feature. And I wonder if this is something they can implement in a firmware update. It seems like the autofocusing tech is there to do so, but I don't know. I'm I'm not an engineer, so I can't really say firsthand. So Fuji, if you're watching this, please, please give us a touch to track autofocusing in the future. I'd say both are built quite nice. Both have weather sealing. The X-H2 looks a bit lengthier than the Sony a7 IV just by a little bit. Both have an articulating uh, flip out screen, an LCD screen, and an EVF. I would say the LCD screen and the EVF is much better on the Fujifilm X-H2 than the Sony a7 IV. Every time I shoot outside, it's hard to see in that EVF. It's not as sharp and bright as the Fujifilm. The Fujifilm's viewing experience makes it a joy to use, and it gets me excited every time I review my photos in the EVF. Both have a great battery life. For the Sony, the longest I've shot with it was around four hours and I got around like a thousand to 1300 shots. And by the end of the shoot, I'd say I had about like 10 to 15% battery left. Your mileage may vary if you add video into the mix. So just be mindful of that. And for the Fujifilm X-H2, I find that with one battery, I can get around a thousand shots as well. Again, your mileage may vary depending on what you shoot. And if you're shooting 8K, it could be drained even faster. Both have a nice grip, both have weather sealing. Although I haven't tested out the weather sealing uh, for the X-H2, it has been uh, beautiful for the most part here in the Algarve. And when it does rain here, I don't wanna go outside. So I'm not gonna be shooting in the rain so i have used the sony a7 IV in a mild snowstorm it was snowy outside around minus 10 degrees celsius windy as heck and i would say in that scenario the sony did great nothing failed 
I was able to go inside afterwards to shoot some more. Nothing happened, it didn't shut down on me or nothing. Both have IBIS and I say they do a pretty decent job. I like having IBIS in my camera in low light scenarios because instead of raising the ISO and introducing noise into the shot, I like to keep the ISO as low as possible and rely on the IBIS instead. That allows me to use a slower shutter speed and allow in more light. I would say both can get the job done in that scenario. I shoot a lot of low light portraits and this is how I like to shoot. Both have full size HD on my ports. That is very, very great for a secure and snug connection between the HDMIs. I'm looking at you, Canon, with your Canon R6 Mark II, the micro HDMI. This is why I, did. I don't buy Canons. Both have two memory card slots and both have a CF Express card uh, in one of the slots. The Sony is a Type A and the Fuji is a Type B. Me personally, I like Sony's design on that matter. Having the CF Express Type A in the same slot that could fit an SD card as well. So if you don't do anything that is demanding, you can just use another SD card in that Type A slot. And Type A is not something you need. And if you guys don't wanna spend much money on it, that slot is available for an extra SD card. So I love both cameras for different reasons. I love using the Sony a7 IV as my uh, video YouTube camera. It's been glued to this desk and I find it so re reliable as like a YouTube content creation camera. I did a few photography gigs with the Sony a7 IV long before I picked up the Fujifilm X-H2. Uh, this was when I was still living in Toronto about like six, seven months ago. And I say that, I'd say that this camera was freaking amazing. It performed quite well. It was reliable. I've taken some corporate headshots for this co uh, paint company. I even filmed a little commercial for them using uh, the Sony a7 IV as well. And it's been reliable as heck. The clients were happy with the video and their photos. Every time I go on site, I would photograph them in action. And having an auto-focusing tracking where it can just pick up the painter's face is very clutch. I shot with this camera in not so adequate lighting condition. Some of these uh, paint sites are homes that is not photograph lighting friendly. So I get very amazed by how good the tracking is in that scenario. <laughs> it, like It's like really, sometimes it's really dark and can pick up the face or pick up the eye with like, like no hesitation with no problems whatsoever. The images I got for the Sony is crispy, it's clean, it has that full frame 3D pop that you get. And despite not having the greatest color science, I made it work with the Sony a7 IV. The full frame look is nice. It's, it's clean comparing it to my Fujifilm XS10, which I was using at the time. And the Sony a7 IV has a much cleaner file to work with, which is amazing. But as of late, this camera has become my video camera for this YouTube channel. If I'm not reviewing the Sony a7 IV or making a video about it where you see me holding it, then I am using the Fujifilm X-H2S or the X-H2 to film me on. Whichever one I'm not comparing with the Sony is the one I'm usually filming. And right now that is the Fujifilm X-H2S. <laughs> Are you still working? Are you still rolling? Another reason why I use uh, Sony for video instead of the this X-H2S is because of this digital shotgun mic right here. Where is it? Right here, baby. Look at this right here, daddies. The sound of this mic is just freaking amazing and I don't need to do any uh, anything to it. No post-processing needed. It just picks up my voice and I think it sounds so great. So having this great sounding mic helped in making my YouTube videos sound a lot better. I, again, I can use the Fujifilm X-H2S, no problem, but then I will need to worry about post-processing the audio and honestly the less work the better for me <laughs> because of this youtube channel i have to become a video editor i have to learn how to color grade i have to learn about audio and i have to learn how to post process audio so there's a lot to take in because of that i'm, I'm just not a photographer anymore i'm also a content creator even though i talk about photography on this channel i do a lot more behind the scenes that you guys don't see so anything to reduce the workflow is what i'm gonna try to do i'm trying to streamline everything to its fullest but saying that i i find that this camera camera does not bring the same joy and excitement that the Fujifilm cameras does, especially the Fujifilm X-H2. The Fujifilm does inspire me to go out and shoot. I vibe with the Fujifilm colors a lot more than the Sony colors. And I find that editing with a Fujifilm RAW is less time on your workflow, meaning you have more time to go out and shoot instead of staying inside and trying to massage your RAW files to get your colors right. Something I do often when I shoot with my Sony. For me, the number one important thing to an image is the color. I find that 
concept the Sony Color Science, although improved since the Sony A7 II days, is still not to the level of the Fujifilm. And the Fujifilm X-H2 has some of the best colors I've seen. To me, it looks and feels more rich and vibrant, and that could be something to do with its new sensor technology, according to Fujifilm. It has improved color and tonality in it. So again, I do love the colors coming out of the Fujifilm X-H2 a lot better than the Sony a7 IV. If a camera can get me excited, can get me out of my house so I can shoot, that's the camera that I want to take with me all the time. Again, I use Sony for work and Fujifilm for play. And although I feel as though I can be biased sometimes because my preference is Fuji, I try to give you guys as balanced and as objective of a, a review as I can. And I'll be the first to shit on Fujifilm if I find something flawed about them. And I have when it came to the Fujifilm X-H2. I pointed out some quirks and I got some crazy fanboys calling me an idiot. Oh, I'm sorry, I have an opinion I would like to express on the internet. I didn't know that was not allowed. Sims. Sony is still a reliable camera. It's consistent. It's almost too easy in getting the shot you want. You just set your autofocusing and let the tracking take care of it. And all you got to do is worry about the composition. And that's what I always preach. Uh, I like that reliability, that workhorse, that you know you can trust. Uh, Sony's autofocusing is something you can trust. The images you get out of this is going to be clean and crazy sharp and crispy and in focus. The dynamic range, the full frame look, the weather ceiling, the battery life, all great on the Sony a7 IV. Fuji is not too far behind in terms of reliability. The autofocusing is almost there. It's just in those random scenarios where I don't trust it. I don't trust it for video. But for photography, I am quite satisfied with the amount of images I've been getting versus the older gen models. So people who are upgrading from the older models should be satisfied with the result. Just don't expect Sony levels. But the Fujifilm has that factor. I don't want to call it a wow factor. I don't know. I guess it could be called a wow factor. Every time I review images with the Fujifilm, it gets me super excited. I think it has something to do with the film simulations, the colors, the tonality. The way that this camera handles skin tones is just freaking amazing. Some of the best looking skin tones in the game, I swear to you. It gives out a very filmic look and that is something I find very hard to replicate on the Sony no matter how hard I try. I don't care what people say about it. If it's a raw, you can edit it and get it to any style you want. Honestly, it's just so hard to get the colors right uh, with a Sony in my opinion. I just find editing on a Sony RAW file is just a bit tedious. It's possible, it's just very tedious. But when I spend more time on editing than I would like, I I would, I just get frustrated. So, uh, so I honestly don't know how Sony portrait shooters can get their skin tone looking so good whenever I see them shoot with a Sony camera. I commend them because I know that must have been hard to do. They must have spent like a lot of time in post-production to get their colors to look right. Obviously, you get a sharper image on the Sony, no question. The G Master lenses are some of the sharpest lens I've used. The Fujifilm X-H2 also takes great photos and also takes great videos and has also has a better EVF and a back LCD screen and can shoot ProRes internal, something that the Sony a7 IV can't do. The Sony does have a mature lens lineup. They also have a diverse third-party lens lineup as well. Fuji is slowly allowing the likes of Tamron Sigma to come in and make third-party lenses for the Fujifilm X-Mount system, but it's not as fleshed out as Sony's. The Sony is coming in at 2,500 US dollars and the Fujifilm X-H2 is coming in at 2,000 and that's a price difference of 500. Now you gotta ask yourself what you like more because they're both great cameras. On paper, the Fujifilm X-H2 is cheaper and in my opinion has better specs and both are great for hybrid shooters, content creators, photographers. Both can get the job done in 2022 or 2023. The Fujifilm X-H2 is just a bit better in specs in my opinion. It just boils down to your needs and your wants. Do you want a full frame uh, Sony camera and have the benefits that comes with having a full frame sensor, better low light, better dynamic range, more tone. Sony's trusting and reliable autofocusing, but you can spend a long time in post trying to get the colors right. Or do you want the Fujifilm with its 40 megapixel se uh, sensor, 8K video recording, not as good as Sony's autofocusing, but it's still good, but it's an APS-C sensor. It can't give you that full frame separation. And in theory, it's supposed to be bad in low light. Because of its 40 megapixel combined with its small APS-C sensor, it's 
supposed to be bad in low light, but I've tested it out. It's not as bad as everyone's saying about a high megapixel sensor, and it has good dynamic range as well. And the Fujifilm colors are just goaded. Fujifilm colors, the one of the best in the game. For the people that haven't experienced that Fuji color, go rent a Fujifilm camera and experience what others Fujifilm users experience. They can tell you how beautiful it is and that it's something you gotta experience for yourself. And once you do, you'll understand why people like me are always talking about colors when compared to a Sony camera. You also have Fujifilm's uh, film simulation, which I think is a differentiating factor to separate them from different camera systems out in the market. And I think the Fujifilm X-H2 has around 15 film simulations, including the latest one, the Nostalgic Negative. And I think the Fujifilm X-H2 is more of a complete camera uh, against the Sony a7 IV, in my opinion. It can do everything the Sony, uh, the Sony a7 IV can do. It's just not full frame. And that could be a deal breaker for some people. With the difference of $500, if you're getting a uh, Fujifilm X-H2, you can use that difference to invest in more gear, maybe more memory cards, lenses, or whatever you may need. So is that extra $500 worth the full frame camera? Which one are you picking, the Sony or the Fujifilm? Let me know in the comments down below. If you guys are interested, I'll leave the links to the gear down in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy your holidays and if you find this video helpful, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. Your support is super appreciated by me. I do Fujifilm content, I do photography related content, and sometimes I throw a little bit of Sony in there. And as always, my name is Tung and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Korean heart. Korean heart. Korean heart.